And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you Let's take it slow Who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time wherever you're with me Let's take it slow Take it slow, where you go, I go too And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you Let's take it slow What's going on guys? JSGC here and we are here for another Manchester City live stream Today we're going to be doing episode number 10 of the transfer show running this summer. This is the penultimate episode of the transfer show. We'll be doing another live stream next week where we'll be recapping literally everything that's happened in the window. This episode is strictly dedicated to everything that's happening here on transfer deadline day with what have we got now? Seven hours less than six and a half hours left of the transfer window. So if Manchester City are wanting to do any last minute uh, business, they're going to have to get the skates on. Now, I'm not expecting Manchester City to be active in the incomings. We brought in Mateus Nunes. We'll speak more about that in a bit. I'm not expecting Manchester City to add anybody else to their first team squad. I'm not expecting Manchester City to add any young players to the team today either. It's very much now about sorting out our squad and any players that futures need to be sorted need to be done by 11pm today if they are to move to a European team because Saudi Arabia, for example, their transfer window doesn't close uh, for another three weeks or so. So uh, Man City have got a lot of their business done today. Day. There's one or two uh, little deals involving City that are knocking around that just need to be ironed out and sorted before the 11pm uh, deadline. And once they're sorted, that is that. That's Manchester City done in the summer 2023 transfer window. And I'm nearly 100 updates along, <laughs> yeah, which shows you just how busy and uh, how long this Manchester City transfer season has been. But we are very very close now to the finale of that. Uh, so before I do crack on with this live uh, stream, make sure, like always, if you are enjoying the content, uh, please do leave a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. Uh, let's see if we can get to 100 likes. That would be much appreciated. So if you are watching and, and uh, are enjoying the content, please do leave a thumbs up. Also, don't forget as well to subscribe if you are new around here. Now less than 300 subs away from 32,000 subscribers. We're having our last push now towards 32K. So any help towards that would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget social media links, including Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. They're all in the description if you want to go and follow me on there. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Uh, if you're watching this after the video uh, has ended, the live stream's ended, then do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're tuning in now, then don't forget, we've got the live chat rolling. We'll have a good transfer discussion. See, we've already got Smig in uh, on the chat. Much appreciated. Hello, Smig. Hello to English Dawn as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Jouting Sailor, thanks for tuning in. Says that's done for the summer transfer window, he reckons, for Manchester City. And I think you may be right there, my friend. Andy, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. It says an excellent signing is only going to strengthen our midfield. On about Mateus Nunes here. Uh, uh, we'll we'll uh, strengthen our midfield as well as offering something a little bit different. Thanks for all the efforts, Jay, for the last few months. Come on, City. Andy and Alison tuning in from York. Thank you very much to Andy and Alison there for the kind comment. We will speak more about Mateus Nunes in a bit. Andrew, thanks for tuning in as well. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And English Dawn. Uh, because he's going to be going into the academy, I don't think there's any rush for Man City to get that transfer done. It doesn't need to be complete today. This is literally just for the first team that needs to be sorted, uh, in particular when it comes to registering players, when it comes to youth academy players that can be brought in 
whenever they want to, and then they can be integrated into the squad, so to speak. Rule a little bit different when it comes to uh, the academy rather than the first team. So transfer deadline day, uh, very much here. September 1st is very much aimed towards first team squads. Uh, LR10 as well, thank you very much for tuning in. Much appreciated. So welcome, everybody. So we're going to start off today. Uh, we're not going to be live for too long because, quite frankly, uh, as I said, Man City have already done their business. So we're just going to speak about what business has been done. I'll give some of my thoughts. Uh, you guys can give your thoughts and we'll have a little bit of interaction. So we've seen the futures of some Manchester City young players sorted today. Uh, Taylor Harwood Bellis, he's left to go out on loan to Southampton. I ideally would have liked to have seen him, uh, if we were going to loan him, loan him out to the Premier League to give him a test of something new uh, because the deal that we've got in place with Southampton for uh, this for this season is the exact same terms as what was in place for him last season with Burnley. So I feel like he's just doing the exact same thing again. And when you're at the age, what, 21, 22 years old, you need to you need to start kicking on with your footballing career, really. Uh, and that's what I'd be looking for, to give Taylor Harwood Bellis experience of something that he's not had before, something that he's not tried and tested in, and that would have been Premier League football. But I think Man City just left it a bit late, and City were always pushing for that permanent sale. It never happened. It was always £15 million. He was out on loan at Burnley last season. He was brilliant at Burnley, yet Burnley still said no to £15 million for him, even though Burnley have got £15 million to spend on him, just didn't value him at that. Not even Forest name was being chucked out there all the time. They've decided not to make a move. And in the end, Man City have just gone, we're going to have to loan him and ended up loaning him back to the Championship. He goes to Southampton, a brilliant team, great with working miracles with young players. I'm sure they'll get the very best out of Taylor, and I'm sure that'll be a very good loan deal. And Southampton do have the option to make that signing permanent, uh, however, as I said, is another season now in the championship for Taylor Harwood Bellis when I feel like he's better than the championship. I feel like he should be getting tested in the Premier League. I think Taylor Harwood Bellis, in my opinion, even though he plays in a different position to that of Tommy Doyle and James McAtee, both them players did very well in the championship last season. And now both them players are going to be playing Premier League football. And I feel like Taylor Harwood Belly should really be now playing Premier League football. And uh, in 12 months' time, he might be playing Premier League football. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, as I said, when you leave things this late in the window, it's going to happen. Uh, he's got a good loan there to Southampton. So uh, we'll see uh, how he gets along. Um, another player that's left City, so speaking about Tommy Doyle there, he's joined Wolverhampton Wanderers on loan. It was a completely separate deal to that that took Mateus Nunes to Manchester City, but was part of the negotiations. And City have agreed to loan Tommy Doyle to Wolverhampton Wanderers, so he's going to spend the season out on loan there. They also have an option to buy. That's worth only £5 million, but Man City have slapped on a massive 50% sell-on clause, which means any future fee that Wolves, if they do decide to make that deal permanent next summer, any future sale that they get for Tommy Doyle, Manchester City, are getting half, which explains why we're selling for £5 million. It isn't uncommon for Man City to sell our young players for a little bit less, so we get sweeter terms when it comes to sell-on fees and buyback clauses, and that's pretty much what's happened here with Tommy Doyle. We all know he's a, a player that's highly rated. We all know he's worth more than £5 million. But if Man City are pushing to get a little bit more, then it is what it is. Uh, and uh, another player that's headed out on loan that's been confirmed in the last couple of hours since I did my transfer update, James McAtee was set to sign for Sheffield United on loan for the season. That has since been confirmed. That's done and dusted. And James McAtee now is a Sheffield United player for the season. So wishing Taylor, uh, wishing Tommy and wishing James the very best of luck on their loan deals uh, away from Manchester City and hope they go and smash it at their represent uh, rep representative. <laughs> at their, what's, what's the word we're looking for here? It would be their, their clubs. Okay, we'll just stick with that. <laughs> they're clubs. That's where they're going. Uh, now, another confirmed signing that we've had today away from Manchester City uh, in terms of the uh, outgoings uh, is Cole Palmer. We know Cole Palmer was set to join 
Chelsea on a permanent transfer. It wasn't going to be a loan deal. Wolves were getting linked. Ajax apparently asked a question to Manchester City as well. Uh, there's a whole host of clubs that's been linked with Cole Palmer this uh, this summer. Brighton and Hove Albion were a team that was showing a lot of interest in Cole Palmer. And all them clubs that I've just named to you guys are all good deals, I think, for Cole Palmer. I think Cole Palmer would have prospered at all of these clubs. Instead, he goes to Chelsea. Chelsea are paying more. They're paying £40 million plus £5 million in add-ons. I'm happy with that. I think that's a really good deal for Manchester City. But I can't help but feel that uh, Cole Palmer uh, is literally just doing exactly the same as what he was doing at Manchester City, but he's going to be doing at Chelsea. Is he going to break into that first eleven squad? More than likely not. He's going to be sat on the bench. And Chelsea are a team that just like to spend, spend, spend. And in 12 months' time, Cole Palmer will probably not be getting a look in. And he will end up on loan at Brighton or somewhere. So it's not, to me, a transfer that makes sense. I just think Man City were personally happy for, let's let's be brutally honest here, a fringe player at Manchester City to gather £40 million, I think, is what they were happy with. Uh, and that is what has uh, what has happened and we've, uh, we've sanctioned the sale. I think Cole Palmer's a high-quality young player. I'd love to see what he can do. I'd love for him to have stayed at Manchester City, but the fact is, Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, Jeremy Doku, they can all play in his position and they're all going to get into the team ahead of uh, him. So because of that, he has to think, you know what? I need to go somewhere I'm going to be playing on a more regular basis. And I'm not entirely convinced that Chelsea's the answer. I, I wonder if this is uh, his agent maybe pushing for a nice little agent fee to get a nice transfer sorted here. I'm not sure. Uh, Juan Marlilo's comments were very interesting in the uh, press conference today in the build-up to the Fulham game tomorrow uh, in saying that when a player's unhappy and a player wants to leave, uh, it takes the ball out of Manchester City court and there's not a lot that we can do. And ultimately, I presume, Cole Palmer's asked to leave Manchester City. So, I'm disappointed to lose him. I think he's a really good player. Uh, I think he's got a good move to Chelsea. I just don't think Chelsea's the right move. It's a good move, but not the right move, in my complete honest opinion, at this point in his development. I think he would have been better pushing for a move to a club where he's going to be playing on a regular basis. And I don't think Chelsea's the answer. I mean, there's a lot of Premier League clubs that would give him that game time. I don't think Chelsea would. And I don't think Man City can guarantee it either. So uh, anyway, yeah, they're my thoughts. Uh, thank you very much, Boy Racer, for tuning in. Thank you. It is the re respective... <laughs> I'm really struggling with that. <laughs> Their respective clubs uh, is where they've headed out on loan. So thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Um, Rightio, uh, if Trap thinks there's only one more outgoing I, I need to speak about. I'm just trying to think if there's any more that I might have missed. There's been some more minor deals that have been happening. Mickey Van Sass has gone to Feyenoord, for example. He's a goalkeeper at Manchester City. He was on a scholarship. We brought him in uh, from Belgium and he's gone to the Netherlands now. So uh, that, uh, that'll be a really good uh, good move for him going to a Champions League team, Feyenoord, of course, now. Uh, so looking forward to seeing what uh, he can do in the future. And uh, who knows, he might be able to establish himself one day as the new Feyenoord number one. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I do think there's only one uh, real transfer now to, to speak about when it comes to the outgoings at Manchester City, and that is the one big remaining question, the one player that's still not left Manchester City. He's still a City player. We've now, the clock's ticking. We've got, what, six hours, 16 minutes left of the window, and that's Jao Cancelo. He is, believe it or not, still a Manchester City player, and rumours were coming out that uh, a deal Barcelona was set to collapse. Bayern Munich were in the pipeline. They were ready to make a move for him. It's since been reported by Christian Fork, who's normally pretty spot on with Bayern Munich news, uh, has said that uh, Jao Cancelo has said no to Bayern Munich. So it seems like he's confident that he's going to get his move to Barcelona. And I think his confidence is more than what I have in confidence in that. I wouldn't be surprised if in tomorrow's transfer update, I'm telling you guys that Jao Cancelo is still a Manchester City player. I really wouldn't be surprised to report that to you guys. Barcelona are struggling to register uh, Jao Cancelo as a player. They believed it was something to do with an option to buy and they've removed it away from the deal. But Paul Ball has been pretty spot on uh, in the past with Manchester City News, came out today and said Barcelona 
have submitted their offer to Manchester City. Today's the first time they've spoken to Manchester City about João Cancelo. So I am not entirely convinced that this deal is as far advanced as what has been made out. We haven't had a here we go from Fabrizio Romano. There's still work to be done in this deal. And Barcelona, if they want to get this transfer sorted, it needs sorting soon. João Cancelo still in Portugal. Barcelona are pushing right now to sign a João, but it's João Felix that they're pushing for, not João Cancelo. Uh, so that needs sorting for Manchester City. There's a big question mark. The expectation is he joins Barcelona. But as I said, my trust in where Barcelona are at with their transfers and how they make things happen, I am not entirely convinced that João Cancelo is going to end up there. And if it does collapse and it doesn't happen, there's not enough time for him to go anywhere else in Europe. He will have to remain a Manchester City player. And I think if that does happen, and tomorrow, when I, on my transfer update tomorrow morning, if I say to you guys, João Cancelo is still a Manchester City player, I think Man City and Cancelo are going to have to push really hard for a transfer to Saudi Arabia. As I said, it's important. They've still got three weeks left of their window. They can still do transfers. Uh, and if Manchester City needs João Cancelo to leave, I would be pushing hard for that to happen. He could come back to Manchester City. I don't think Pep Guardiola wants him here. And because Pep doesn't want him here, I don't think that tran uh, that uh, move of him staying at Manchester City and going back from Portugal back to Manchester, I just don't see it happening. I don't know why he spent pre-season with us. His future's very much been in limbo. Uh, we struggled to get it sorted. We panicked towards the end of the winter window to get his future sorted. We ended up settling for a temporary option. And when you settle for a temporary option and you're rushing things, this is what happens. We haven't got anything sorted this summer. The summer's been long and City still haven't got anything sorted and it's still uncertain. And to me, uh, I'm not often that critical when it comes to transfers involving Manchester City, but I can't help but feel like with this João Cancelo transfer, this should have been handled a lot better by all parties involved, whether that be Cancelo, whether that be Barcelona, whether that be Cancelo's representatives and his agent, whether that be City's representatives. I think everybody could have done a little bit more to get it sorted. The fact that we're looking here now uh, in 12 minutes time when it strikes 5 p.m. BS team, we've got less than six hours left of the window and we still don't know what's happening with Cancelo. That rings alarm bells. That's red flag territory, in my opinion, when it comes to transfers. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. Interesting. Yes. Dramatic. Yes. Does it need to happen? Absolutely not. So I don't know what's going to happen. We'll wait and see. Now, moving on to the final transfer then that City have got sorted today on transfer deadline day. Takes us on to Mateus Nunes, added to Manchester City's midfield. It's freed up a bit of space in our squad, which is good to see. It's allowed Tommy Doyle to go on loan. It's allowed James McAtee to go on loan. Uh, we're bringing Doku in. It's allowed us to uh, move Cole Palmer on. I was expecting that to potentially have a buyback clause. It isn't going to have a buyback clause. I was expecting him to go to uh, a Brighton or, or a Wolves or somebody like that. No. He's gone to Chelsea, so no buyback clause. City have got a little bit more money involved in that, which is which is good or bad, depending on which side of the fence you want to sit on when it comes to that transfer. So it does mean Man City have needed more depth. We've added depth to the wing with Doku, and now we've added depth to our midfield uh, with Mateus Nunes. And I think the thing that pleases me the most about this transfer, City have got a good deal, £53 million. It's about £6 million profit for Wolves, so good for them, with a player having a year less on their contract as well. We've got a player that's eager, that wants to be here, but we've got somebody who offers competitive competition across numerous parts of our midfield. Uh, Mateus Nunes can play in a more advanced role. He can create opportunities. He's good with his ball distribution. He can tackle. He can read the game really well. He can sit in a deeper role as well. He can play right across that midfield for Manchester City. So if we get any injuries to any players, Mateus Nunes is ready there. Competitive uh, competition for places, ready to step up to the plate. And I know a few Wolves fans have been commenting on my videos uh, and saying he's going to be a bench player, he's not going to get any minutes. With the amount of rotation Man City put in place, he will get minutes. With how injury-prone some of Man City's midfielders can be, we've not got De Bruyne until January or February time. Uh, Mateo Kovacic hasn't got the best track record when it comes to injuries. We needed them options. And bringing in someone like Mateus Nunes provides that competition for places in Manchester City's midfield. And to me, as of for at least this season, our midfield looked 
pretty complete. I'm happy with our midfield. I would like to have had a young player good and ready to go uh, in case we end up getting three or four injuries, that you've always got that depth there. But then you're holding back somebody who's potentially got world-class uh, credentials, just like James McAtee has and Tommy Doyle has, and they deserve to be getting more regular game time. And that's not going to happen at Manchester City. So it'll be interesting to see if any of the other young players are promoted to the first-team squad to take over that slack should they need to. We've seen Oscar Bob come in. He's Man City's replacement for Cole Palmer. So if there's options that aren't there for City and we need players to go onto the bench to potentially feature and get 10, 15-minute cameo appearances here and there and some appearances in the cup, uh, if we're taking on teams who put out either weakened teams or teams from lower divisions, then you need them options. Uh, and to me, the likes of Tommy Doyle, Taylor Harwood, Bellis, James McAtee, they're beyond that in their development. They're ready to go. They need to be playing competitive action. Uh, and uh, to be fair, in the next 12 to 24 month, players like Oscar Bob will be in that same camp. They're not quite there yet. They need to learn from the best. We've got the best coaches. We've got the best players. We're set up. Good to go. I do feel like we may be may, uh, one or two young players short. So I wonder if Man City uh, may want to promote a couple of academy players, but we seem to have sold most of the good ones and made a lot of money this summer. So uh, we will see. Uh, and I think Man City are taking a little bit of a gamble uh, in wanting to, to keep their players injury free. We can afford one or two injuries. When you get three or four is when you start to get the problems. Uh, and it'll be interesting with players coming back from injury now, uh, ready, because we've got near enough everybody back other than Kevin De Bruyne, uh, that maybe for the Fulham game, it might be a bit too soon for that. But certainly after the international break, touch wood, we can keep everybody fit over the international break. Then all of a sudden, Man City's options on the bench look very strong and Manchester City's depth looks pretty strong as well. As I said, dip in with three, four injuries and all of a sudden that strong core squad of 20, 21 players starts to get stretched and starts to look thin. So Manchester City taking a risk. It's a risk we took last season that paid off. We need to keep players injury free and hopefully again, touch wood, we can get uh, Kevin De Bruyne firing on all cylinders in that second half of the season. But most importantly, we need to make sure that he's completely over his hamstring injuries. It's been it's been coming, this serious injury for him. He's been uh, playing around for over 12 months with dodgy hamstrings. So uh, it doesn't surprise me that he's had an operation that he's out for months now. Uh, so we need to make sure that he's recovering because he's 32 years old. It's not the youngest of uh, football players out there now. Recovery time may take a little bit longer and there are questions about whether he ever will be the same again or not. We won't know. The The more we give him, uh, the longer we give him to recover, the more time we give him, I think the stronger position we will be in. And having Kevin De Bruyne coming back January, February time ready for the business end of the season will be a new signing for Manchester City. We'll like a new signing for Manchester City anyway. I think we're ready to go. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Man City go with a weakened team against Newcastle in the Carabao Cup. I wouldn't be surprised to see Newcastle go with a full-strength team and Man City not being that bothered and getting knocked out of the competition because it limits it, uh, how many games we've got to play between now and the winter January transfer window, where I think City again will uh, assess the uh, situation with what uh, what we've had. But uh, all in all, then it's been a very busy window for Manchester City. Uh, we've seen Bernardo Silva stay, Kyle Walker set to sign a new deal, which is great. Sadly, uh, we've seen Ilkay Gundogan leave on a free contract to Barcelona. We've seen Riyad Mahrez leave Manchester City to go to Saudi Arabia. As well, we've needed to replace these players. Man City have chosen to address uh, these situations, these issues. We've seen Emerit Laporte leave to go to Saudi Arabia. We've got a question mark now over um, Jao Cancelo and what happens with him. But Manchester City bringing in four senior first team players, uh, all of which uh, are of a really good age to offer something a little bit unique to Manchester City, uh, bringing in, of course, Mateo Kovacic first and foremost in this window, cracking signing from Chelsea. We keep him injury-free. We've got a brilliant central midfielder there. Yoshko Gavardi, one of the highest, most upcoming prospects around the world when it comes to left-sided defenders, cracking signing for that, and it's freed up in Merit Laporte to pursue a move away from Manchester City to go to Saudi Arabia. We then brought in Jeremy Doku, which has freed up Cole Palmer to leave Manchester City and allow Oscar Bob to take over for Cole Palmer role. Uh, Riyad Mahrez leaving. Obviously, Doku's going to be occupying and helping with that. Uh, and you'll have Foden and Bernardo Silva that can be used out wide as well. Uh, so it's left Man City a little bit short in midfield, which is why we've chosen to bring in Mateus Nunes 
for £53 million as well. As I said, I think Man City might be one signing short, but as of right now, I'm pretty happy with City's squad. We keep our squad injury-free between now and the winter transfer window, assess the situation again. And if De Bruyne's injury is looking serious and he's not going to be back for this season, which I'd say is the worst-case scenario, or got other injuries to other players, or we need to dip into the market, then Man City can pursue to go and do that. I'd be surprised. City don't normally dip into the winter market, but I think uh, more so this season, I think City will keep their options open and then we will head into next summer as well. And I think that rounds everything up really nicely. So as I said, we'll be back with one more episode, our final episode next week, where we'll go through Man City's transfer business in more detail speaking about that. Uh, so thank you very much to everybody for tuning in. Much appreciated. Uh, English Dawn says the Fulham game's getting dedicated to Alex Williams, City's goalkeeper and chief of the city uh, in the community who is retiring. Best wishes to him. I've heard about that. Yeah, best wishes to him. There's also going to be a big carnival celebration going on at the Etihad tomorrow in our match against Fulham as Manchester City are celebrating Bahia joining the City football group. Uh, and English Dawn spot on there with Foden, Akanji and Stones now all should be good to go for this game against Fulham as well. And that's the direction we move into now. Transfer window, near enough, done and dusted. It's now on with the season. And this is where the hard work really, really starts. So there we go. That has been today's transfer show. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, uh, then do leave a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. Uh, aim for 100 likes or any help towards that. I'd be much appreciated. Subscribe as well if you're new around here. Press that red button, press the bell, and put your push notifications on social media links. They're in the description below if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok links. Also, don't forget email in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Do let me know your thoughts while we're live for the next minute or so. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Much appreciated to see some more people tuning in as well. Thank you very much, Mullen. We've got the Miami Dolphins. We've got the NFL season starting up again very soon. So looking forward to that. Um, and English Dunn saying City should be taking the Carabao Cup seriously. They may choose to take the Carabao Cup seriously. I'm just saying that's what I would do if I'm in charge. I'm not in charge. Pep Guardiola's in charge, so we'll see what he does. We've got a difficult match against Newcastle. I will lose no sleep if we end up going out of the competition. Uh, but uh, City have won it that many times. I would say out of all the major domestic honours that you've got available, the Carabao Cup, to me, is the one that I probably take the least serious. It's great to win it. You get a cracking day out at Wembley in February. It's one of my favourite competitions. Uh, but if you're not going to go on and win the competition... I would rather, for where we're at with our squad, go out uh, at the earliest possible opportunity and going out uh, at the first time of asking if we can keep everyone injury-free and we can focus on our Champions League group and topping that and going through to the last 16 uh, and focus on trying to stay at the top of the Premier League. I'm happy to make that sacrifice, but we will see what will happen. Joel, thanks very much for tuning in. Much appreciated as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys all again real soon. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Thank you for the continued support as well. We're nearly at an end with transfer content. One big transfer left to sort. What's going to happen with Jao Cancelo? I'll have the latest on that tomorrow. So I've been JSGC. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope everyone is safe and well. Peace. Ciao for now.